Welcome to America's Top Revisions. In the merit of this class, may Hashem watch over all the Jewish people and give enormous strength to the IDF soldiers, including Hillel Bat Margaret, Hirsch Ben Perelhana, Hirsch Ben Rachel, and Idan Ben Dalit. Please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to us on the America's Top Revisions YouTube page, or click follow to follow us on your podcasting app so that you are the first to know when an inspiring new episode is posted. Today, I am so happy to welcome Javi Kestenbaum. Javi is a registered nurse and psychotherapist. She's also a certified mastery coach from the Dina Friedman Academy. Javi specializes in facilitating communication and harmony in family relationships, specifically helping newlywed couples to understand the difference between expectations and reality, facilitating young adults to discover their authentic selves, helping to improve strained relationships between parents and adult children, and also guiding mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law through conflict resolution. With unconditional love for others, Javi radiates positivity to those around her, which really helps her clients tap into and access the inherent love within themselves. This is such a special quality that you have. Wow. Thank you so much for being here. Please tell us more about yourself and what you do. Sure. Thank you, Vera. It's so nice to be here. It's an honor to be asked to do such a thing and give my perspective on mother-in-law and daughter-in-laws. Thank you. Well, I'll start with, I love people. Um, I come from a home where my parents had loads of guests. Sometimes they stayed for months. Wow. And yes. And our Shabbos table was filled with people of all different kinds from the different walks of life. And they, they taught us just love everybody unconditionally, not be judgmental. And that training, I feel like started right away inside of me. So by the time I was raised in, and grown up with getting married and having daughter-in-laws and son-in-laws, it, it served me so well because I was open to people, even though they were different than me. So I, I feel like it starts right away and it, pa- it paved my way for me. Well, anyways, I'm a band conductor. Um, I lead 25 piece bands and 25 piece choirs combination wow. for charity organization, organizations in Toronto. Um, I play seven instruments and I volunteer at Camp Semcha the last 15 years. I made 11 Shadachim. Baruch oh my Hashem. gosh. <laughs> Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Imagine how many dates, you know, that's over, you know, after so many years. And um, with all this experience that I I got from doing all these different things, it, it helps me to have the experience to give and contribute to people because I've had so, been with people so much in so many different situations that um, I, I have the ability to give from what I've learned. Um, and also, I want to be able to give the perspective to mother and daughter-in-laws. You can do it. <laughs> Absolutely, you can do it. It's a matter of um, compromising, having respect for each other, um, and having a right, right mindset. Um, my mother and father taught me to be mavater. Since I'm little, I had to say sorry right away. And that training also made me learn how to be a mavater. And because of that, I can help other people be mavater in relationships. So this leads right into mother and daughter-in-laws, you know, being mavater to each other. Um, I have the energy and the positivity of giving it over. And I would love to help people in the world, really, to make it work. I love it. I love it. And just for people who don't know exactly what mavater means, can you just describe a little bit what it means to be mavater? Yes, mavater is when you're feeling, you both feel strong about the same subject and want it so badly. For instance, you really, really want your daughter-in-law to come on Hanukkah night on Tuesday night because you work on Wednesday. And she says, oh, but I have something on Wednesday night. And you insist that she comes, but better not to insist because she might come with her body, but not her heart. So it's like, be mavater for the big picture because when she comes the day she wants to come, she'll be all there. So you you both give in and make a compromise to each other and then for the bigger picture in life. I love that. that's a really good explanation. I really, really like that. And today we're gonna we're gonna really help people because a lot of people do struggle um in their mother and daughter relationships. And you are the perfect person to for this for this conversation. So I'm very excited. Um, you know, the, the mother and daughter-in-law relationship can be really tricky, and many women have difficulty navigating it, both both on the mother-in-law side and also on the daughter-in-law side. So I'm excited to talk to you deeply about this topic and give guidance, tools, and information to those who, who need to have a great relationship with their in-laws. People want to have a great relationship with their in-laws. So let's start at the beginning. I really want to try to understand why is the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law relationship so challenging? Okay, so it starts off where I, you know, I looked in, 
in Yavamos, I asked my asked my dear husband to help me, and he said um, in Yavamos it says that a daughter in law, a mother, a mother in law can't even testify in court about her daughter in law in a certain situation because we can assume often she's going to have ill feelings towards her daughter in law, and therefore she's not she can't be used for testimony. Interesting. And and then it has it in the Pella Yoates as well, how the, the relationship is usually something that's a challenging relationship. But then on the other hand, we see with Ruth and Naomi, the beautiful mother and daughter-in-law relationship, which we all aspire to have. Yes. David HaMelech was a descendant and Mashiach was supposed to come from there. So with a developed relationship, with communication, we can do it by watching that beautiful Rissa Naomi. And, we, and I remember saying to my daughter-in-law when I first met her, I said, I wish we could just be like Rissa Naomi. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> and, you know, I was, I, I really felt like I would love to, you know, inspire that. That's so beautiful. I really, really love that. I mean, because that's really where we should be. We shouldn't be antagonistic. We shouldn't be, you know, not butting heads, you know, against each other. We should really be um, cooperating with our mother-in-laws and our daughter-in-laws. We should really, really have a smooth relationship. And that hopefully by the end of uh, by the end of the conversation, we'll have some tools to be able to do that. Can I say um, something about the challenges that please. Can, can arise? Okay, so yeah. you think about, you take the mother-in-law. The mother-in-law has just, spent 23 odd years raising her son, checking if he's breathing at night. Yep. When he skins his knees mm -hmm. and she picks him up, staying up while he's sick, helping him ride a bike, helping him choose his yeshiva, his beliefs, his values, his hashkafa. She's there for him and she's modeling her behavior for him. He's learning about her and they kind of have the up on the relationship because they've had the loyalty towards each other for 23 years and she's crazy about her son in the most loving parental adoring way this is her life of course and letting go is very difficult and you might call it like a even like a grieving process at the beginning where she has to let go of this oh after all she knows him best who can know her son you know right but she is raising him for this day so she has she's really in a quandary. How do I let go? I love him so much. And we have to be respectful of that, what she's going through. Then on the other hand, you have the bride, the newlywed. My vision with my husband. I love my husband so much. He's, 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 I, I'm so excited for autonomy, independence. I want to make my new home, my new, my new dreams, my visions of what I want my life to be with my children. And she's young and she's fresh and she's on the ascent in life and just dreaming of her future with her beautiful husband. And she has a new developed love, a younger type of love. And she didn't want specifically to marry a mother-in-law too specifically. She didn't say, <laughs> oh, you know what? I can't wait to meet my mother-in-law. I can't wait to have a new mother-in-law. Even though the mother-in-law might say, I would love to get a new daughter. I want to continue the relationship. You have here also a girl that wants to be independent. I mean, she was, just, she was raised by her parents. Hopefully a healthy relationship. And they told her, bring back the car at a certain time, go to sleep at a certain time. She's ready in her even her, her healthy relationship to break away and have her own autonomy. So you have these two women in the right place, but they're both loving the same men. Yes. One in a parental way and one in a new developed different type of love. Yes. And you have to give respect to both of them. And that's the challenge. <laughs> Yeah, I feel the challenge. As you're describing it, I feel the challenge. So I, you know, I have younger children, but my son, he's 17. That's my oldest child, my son, he's 17. So I'm not right. yet a mother-in-law, but it's, you know, a couple of more years. I hopefully, God willing, I will be. So I can right. feel this or challenge from the parental perspective. Like I, I, like you said, I raised my, I changed my, I changed his diaper. I drove everywhere for him. I did everything for him. All the teacher meetings, like everything, you know, and, right. you know, De then another woman is going to come. Listen, I want him to get married. I want him to be happy. But I also want to have a healthy relationship with my daughter-in-law as well. So, yes. yes. Um. So, you know, so let's take things from a mother-in-law perspective. You know, let's okay. to start with, you know, how can how can her mother-in-law do her part in making her daughter-in-law feel welcome into the family? What can a mother-in-law do on her part to facilitate a harmonious relationship with her daughter-in-law for the sake of family harmony? 
Yes. Okay. I hear. Um, so first of all, to embrace her completely, whether she's educated, too educated, or not so educated, where she has the look you like, or the look you don't like so much, whether she's the least pleasing that you wouldn't have wanted her, but her son, your son chose her after all, whether she wants to be close right away, whether she doesn't want to be close right away, embrace who she is, because we, as mother-in-laws, we're the older ones. We're the ones who have to take the lead. I think of it like a dance, that the waltz, you know, you step back, you step forward. And that's what it should be. It should be that we are the mature ones. And I spoke to my Rev, Rabbi Lowy, because I checked the hashkafa behind it. And he said, absolutely, that the mother-in-law should be the one who takes charge and setting the tone. A and it also, it's like, you really have to think of it maybe in a certain way, like clo when, you, when you have close talking, you know, there's certain people that come a little too close yes. and you back up. Yes. And then you move again back and then they come forward towards you to again. It's a little too close. But if they set their space and give you the space at the beginning and the boundary right away, then you don't have to move back. And in fact, the daughter-in-law might come your way if you gave her the space. That so it, yeah, so it, it, it has to be like not jumping at her. And believe it or not, if you give her that space, the big picture can be so big beautiful you could if you could think of your as a as a jackpot or as a prize if you can figure out how to set the tone the mother-in-law and the balance then you might be the winner of the prize in the end and have a long-lasting relation with your couple relationship with your couple right and that makes a lot of sense and I you know I I know there's so many so many challenges with that because I, I've seen it um and I just want to like really you know maybe talk a little bit about you know the the, the challenges from the mother-in-law perspective because as you mentioned you know we have to embrace our daughter-in-law even if we wouldn't have necessarily picked that particular one for our son mm -hmm. and sometimes that could be really hard like if we don't right. particularly maybe she has a different scuffa, maybe she dresses in a different way you know whatever it is whatever it is how do we for lack of a better way to put it, how do we get over that so that we can embrace her? First of all, we manage our emotions and soothe them privately with a friend, with a, a counselor, because we are packed with emotions, even like it's called like a grieving for a mother when she loses her son to this beautiful, what she wants him to do, but she's in pain. Oh, yeah. And so she needs to manage and soothe herself. That's the first thing. And when she takes care of her own feelings and thinks of the big picture, then she has to recognize the things to do to make her daughter-in-law feel at home. Like some of the, some of the ideas are, is to learn her love language, learn what she appreciates. Like don't give unsolicited advice. If she has topics that she likes to talk about, then let her talk about them. Don't compare her to any of the children, any of the other children. Show like the same love to her as your own daughters. Don't make a difference when they come in, give her one type of welcome. Although I remember the story of, of a daughter-in-law when the mother-in-law gave her a big hug. The daughter-in-law said, you know, can I talk to you privately? And they had a discussion and she said, you know what? I'm not there yet. Okay. I would prefer like, you know, to, to do this slowly. And that was a, a girl who wanted to blow... Um, build on on slow trust like she she didn't believe like I'm gonna jump into this relationship just because you want it right she was somebody who said you know I need to trust you first and the mother once said I love your open communication that you're willing to say that to me and that was a beautiful story about open communication because if she wouldn't have said that to her the mother-in-law would continue being forceful in her love even because it's love it sounds so natural and good right but a lot of the other woman is not ready to receive it in that same way so this, so the idea of having open communication and the mother-in-law can also say to her daughter-in-law, you know what, is there something that I can do differently that would make you feel more comfortable? Is there something that you want to tell me that I'm doing? I'd love to check in with you here and there if I'm making you feel comfortable. And we hope that there's going to be that open communication. And sometimes mother-in-law's say, oh, I want, I want to be close to her. I want to be close to her so badly. But the daughter-in-law is not specifically looking for another parent at this point. She wants to keep her at the distance. Right. Um, I have a story of a um, daughter-in-law. She came to me um, for counseling and she said that 
she was a newlywed and her uh, mother-in-law came, came to her when the, when her husband went to Minion and she said, I want to be close to you and I want to be close to my son. And I feel you're taking him away from me because he has doesn't call me anymore. He's not coming so much for to visit me. I notice you're hanging out more with your own mother. I'm in pain. I want this to stop. And she was 19. So she just cried. She'd go home and cry, not tell her husband. And eventually she got the courage to tell her husband after many times of the mother-in-law trying to control the situation. And her husband says, I can't get in between both of you. So she was angry at her husband. So she said for two years, she had lectures from her mother-in-law. She was angry at her husband because he didn't come. And then finally she came to counseling. And what we, what we did together is we learned how to openly communicate to her mother-in-law. I gave them, I gave her the tools and skills, what she could say to her mother-in-law to explain what she was going through, how much she wanted to help and be part of their life, but she couldn't do it to this extent. He was so busy and she had her own life and, and they communicated and things improved and event. And now they actually, they have a beautiful relationship. That is so nice. And I think that you hit really hit the nail on the head when you said open communication. And I want to, I really want to delve into it because I feel like that's the key here. I feel like open communication is the key to that really beautiful mother-in-law, daughter-in-law relationship. So let's say, you know, let's take it from the perspective of that, of that mother-in-law, for example, you know, Yes, like losing your son, not losing your son, but giving your son over to to a wife. You know, he's not only your son anymore. He's your son and also he's a husband to another woman. And that could be a painful process. And so what from the mother-in-law perspective, if there's something that your daughter-in-law is doing that you don't like, whether it's, you know, not coming over to to see you or if there's just something else that that your daughter-in-law is doing that you don't like what is the best way to approach her? Because you definitely don't want to come at her gangbusters and yelling at her. Like that's not the right approach. So how do you do it? Okay. So first of all, if it has to do with your relationship with her, it's one level. And the other situation is if let's say it just has to do with how she's raising a child, whether she's being abusive or whether she's talking to your son in a certain way, or her house is an absolute mess. So when it comes to externally what's going on even though it's painful for you inside there's one level of discussion and usually they say to not say much to try and you know hold hold your tongue and turn off like the mommy faucet as they say and and let her be who she is but again she's different and and you're different and when it has to do with your relationship per se and you want to be able to communicate because something is so painful for you, you can't continue because it's not happening and she's not coming and you're not coming over and you're in a fight, that's a different story. So then the first thing you do is you, is you say to her, can I have a conversation with you? Can I share with you my feelings? Because there's something, there, there's a way to open it up in a very gentle way, ask to talk to her and soothe her when you speak to her like don't say I have something to tell you now like there's been things on my mind not that kind of thing and I'm sure you a lot of people would know that it's more like you know what I want to say this in the most respectful way to you because you know you mean a lot to me and our relationship is so important to me so can I hope that you trust me enough to share my feelings with you because I'm saying it only with love and only with respect and I want to give you the respect you deserve because our relationship is important. So can I tell you something that's been on my mind that's troubling me so, so I can enhance our relationship? And I just wanted to know if, if you'd be ready to listen. Is it okay with you? That's how I would preface it. Did that answer the question? It 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 did. It did. So then then from there it could go two ways. Sometimes the daughter-in-law really may not even want to hear what the mother-in-law is saying. Absolutely. Because you could give her permission for that. You could say, you know what? Maybe you're not ready to hear this now. And I'll understand that too. Because again, we have to be the more mature ones because we are the older ones. Right. So we have to be, again, the word Mavatya, we have to say to ourselves that we have to soothe our own emotions somehow and say to our daughter-in-law. Is it okay with you if I if if this problem that I'm feeling, or is it okay with you if I share this with you? Is this going to be comfortable for you? And she might say, "No, right, I I can't handle it. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna be upset the whole day. I'm not gonna be able to make supper tonight. I'm gonna be upset with my husband. I'm gonna be more upset with you, or or really, I'm not ready for it." And you'll say, "I appreciate that you were you trusted me to share this and for to share what you felt, right? And 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 we have to be the ones." And 
maybe she'll also say and that that she does want to talk and have open communication yes because to get to a different place very often a, a conversation that's done properly will make you even closer Exactly, exactly. But both parties have to be open to that conversation. Both parties. And very often the daughter-in-law will accept to speak. Or sometimes the mother-in-law will say to her, "Do you? would you like to speak together with an, a third person that we could help resolve the situation together? And very often the daughter-in-law will say, yes, I think I do need somebody because it's too painful otherwise for me. Interesting. Okay. Right. And that makes sense. And that's where like a, a, a counselor, somebody like you would, would come along yes. and facilitate. Come along. Yes. Yes. Um, there was, there's a, should I, there's a situation where um, a, mo- a, a mother-in-law was supporting the family and um, she wanted an accounting from her daughter-in-law from every single bill at the end of the day, what she spent, even though she was supporting her and the daughter-in-law was feeling so pressured and she, and, and she just was doing it for months and months. And then eventually She didn't give a proper account one day and the mother-in-law got quite upset with her. So she went to her husband to complain. She says, this is crazy. Uh, This is insane what your mother-in-law's mother is putting me through. He says, well, you're calling my mother-in-law crazy? Like, this is how we were raised. So that already started that kind of thing. And she says, yeah, but I don't want to give an accounting. I feel like I'm not trusted. So they they came to me. And um, what we decided to do is have a discussion with the mother-in-law where they went back and they spoke to the mother and the mother said, well, my father was a gambler and he had a phobia about money. And therefore I want to teach my children the value of money. And she was a little, you know, it was, it was a complicated, complex situation for her money. And therefore she made a compromise and they made a compromise and they were able to work together. And the more than anything from the open communication, the daughter-in-law was able to understand why she was behaving this way and she said oh now I understand it's not coming from she's controlling it's coming from she's she had a background that was painful and she's scared and she's scared yes absolutely I really love that I love that you said that because sometimes people do things even even not mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws just people just do things and we we think it's definitely because this is the reason for sure that's a hundred percent it's this reason and when we talk to them we figure out it's not that reason at all it's something completely Completely different that we would have never, ever, ever known. Ever known. Yes. There yes. are there are many times where people are coming to me and say that they have um the daughter-in-law just won't come and, and have a relationship. She's just acting upset and not being and just like being standoff to mother to the mother-in-law. And so the mother-in-law came to me and she says, What can I do? So I said, try being a little quieter. Try, she tried to be less in like less loud I and the next time she discussed maybe the idea she could be a little noisier she tried every aspect she tried buying her gifts she tried sending her notes she's tried everything and the daughter-in-law still stay, stayed in 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 an off you know a standoff mood and gave funny expressions and didn't allow her into her life in any way she was there in body but not in spirit right so so when they came to counseling and she realized it when the daughter-in-law opened up and said, it, it's not about my mother-in-law. My own husband is angry at his mother. And therefore my, he won't let me be close to my mother-in-law because he had a strange relationship growing up wow. and he won't allow that beautiful relationship to blossom and he's doing the opposite. He keeps on telling me, don't be, don't talk to her, don't smile, don't this, don't that. And when they opened it up, all of them, the mother and the son went to counseling and the daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law actually became so close, it's unbelievable. So you never know. It's like that whole, just opening it up and, and getting help to try and not to let it fester, to suffer in your in, in your relationships. Right, right. And you actually brought up an important point because sometimes it's not just the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law that are involved in this relationship. It's the husband also. Yes, yes. Wow. So so sometimes also the husband, sometimes it's a three, like three people together in counseling just to figure yes. out what's what. Yes. They call it a triangle in, in, in psychology, the triangulation. Yeah. That's a really that's a really important aspect because sometimes, yeah, sometimes the husband does prevent um the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law relationship, you know, or yeah, and sometimes that can be really, really tricky and really sticky too. And that's something that, that needs to be worked out. Right. It's like two people having a conflict and then they've joined in a third one. That's why it's called triangle triangulation. 
Very interesting. Very interesting. So now this, you know, this opens another door because I want to speak now a little bit more from the daughter-in-law's perspective. Daughter-in-law's wife to do. Yes. So like, what is the role of a daughter-in-law and how can the daughter-in-law do her part to create a positive and harmonious relationship with the mother-in-law? You know, what is her place? Okay. So the role of the daughter-in-law is, if she can, is to be respectful to be respectful to her, to her, because of keyboard of the aim. So hopefully, even though she might have nervous feelings and tense feelings and upset and like preconceived notions about mother-in-laws, which we tr- which we try and tell, we would love we would love for daughter-in-laws to know. And d- your daughters, mother can tell their daughters, it doesn't have to be terrible. It doesn't have to be a tough mother-in-law or a critical mother-in-law. It actually could be beautiful. Yes, actually could be friends. And if you don't, if you don't have preconceived all the jokes that they have in the world and all the talk that they had, even though it is written in the Torah, but it doesn't have in the Gemara, it doesn't have to be that way. It actually could be nice. So to first of all, drop those negative expectations and be curious. They say that so much in psychology, be yes. curious, be adventurous, <laughs> take a look at her and say, Hey, maybe I will like her. Maybe she has something to say, you know, that's going to be interesting. Maybe I, I want to spend time with her. So that's the first thing. And they say, and they use the word also in psychology, energetically for both of them to, even though you act externally one way, people know what you're feeling inside and yes. they feel your energy. So both on both sides, mother and daughter, well, try and work on yourself before you walk in that door and energetically be open and curious and, and see if you could could be feel good towards each other. That's the beginning. Because if you're fighting against your own energy, that's hard. So she could be respectful. She could do the thing that she feels comfortable doing the daughter-in-law. Not everyone, there's no like roadmap, like, you know, it has to be this way, you know, call her, visit her, send her gifts, ask her her recipes, um, visit her, um, make her feel special, tell her you love her. I mean, you could tell her you love your, her son. I love being part of your family, but there's no set rule. I always tell the daughter-in-law or the daughter-in-law or the daughter, do what you feel speaks to you to connect with your mother-in-law. So that way there's no, I have to do this. And why am I not doing it? I feel uncomfortable that I'm not following the rule. I should be calling her every Shabbos. It doesn't have to be calling her every Shabbos. It's your own special way that speaks to you how you could connect with her. That's beautiful. And so it gives the daughter-in-law some some say, you know? Some some space, some say. You don't want to be close tomorrow. You want to wait six months before you like really start the relationship. Just Tell her, you know, you know, if she's coming at you, just say, you know what, I I need a little time or she's a big communicator. You're less of a communicator. So, you know, I, we didn't communicate so, so much in my family. We're not expressors. Uh, we don't express our feelings as much. So can you give me a little time? You can be open, have open communication with her as well to say what you feel for the relationship and the big I, I I don't want to forget to say this that the beginning the first year or two is crucial to set the tone and pave the way and the tone of how you speak to each other is just as important as the words 100 percent. So if you're upset about something don't knee jerk and go you know I don't like the way you did that or I'm noticing that da, da, da. it's your tone could be so different and it can make her feel calm and that first year paves the whole relationship. So if you could hang on to your emotions or get them soothed somehow by a counselor or a friend and you both greet each other at the beginning, it speaks a million words and a million years together of it could mean a potential wonderful relationship. Right. Oh, it's for sure. Yeah. And that's, yeah, because also on the daughter-in-law to also have open communication with the mother-in-law, just like, you know, yes. vice versa. But then sometimes there's a situation and it gets sticky from the daughter-in-law perspective. What if it's your mother-in-law who's like meddling into you? Like she's always telling you how to raise your kids and then she's fetching to her son about you. Like, what if you have a situation like that? Okay. So then I would say to her, I would make a meeting with, with my mother-in-law. I would tell her to make a meeting and say, can I, same idea, I would, I, I want to share with you something, and I want 
you to understand my feelings. You know, I'm new at everything. I'm starting everything. And it's, it's the beginning for me. Right. And I have my own dreams and I have my own visions and I know they're not exactly the same as yours, but is it okay if we talk about, uh, no, I would start off obviously at the beginning, say, is it okay if we talk about something that same beginning? Um, I want to do this because I want to have a, a relationship with you and I want to be able to be comfortable with you. I want to be able to come over to your house and I want to be able to share my children with you and, and share my life with you in the best way I can. Um, but I'm just starting out here and I just need some space to do things on my own. And, and, and let's say the mother says, well, what did I say? What did I do? Is it okay if I share it with you? Like, will you be comfortable? If I say, She'll say, yeah, I want to hear. Well, what I'd like to ask you, is it okay if like when I'm doing something with the children, um, if you tell me privately, you have to, if it's something constructive or can you just like, about my cooking, just understand that I'm trying something new. And can you just give me some time to learn, time to educate myself and time to figure it out in my own way? And um, and the truth is, at, I'm the type of person, if let's say she is that type of person that doesn't want to hear criticism at all. Right. Um, if you're the type of daughter-in-law that, you know, I don't mind it here and there if it's a nice way, but some don't want it at all. This is my beginning and I really am not comfortable with you speaking to me about things about the way I want to do things. And in order for me to be able to continue to have a close relationship, I'll have a relationship, but to have a close relationship and to feel more and more comfortable with you, I'm going to need the space of doing things my own way. And it makes me really uncomfortable when you say things to me. So is it okay if you try and figure out how to do this somehow just to make me feel more at home with you because I'm also interested in a long relationship. I want this to continue. I want us to be close. I want us to be able to come over. I don't want to have to feel, oh no, she's going to notice this. Oh no, she's going to say this to me. So it could be very anxiety provoking, very pressuring, very suffocating for the daughter-in-law to think that she's going to get a criticism or somebody's going to say something about what she's, and the mother-in-law is going to say something about what she's doing. And even if she says nothing, if she hasn't expressed this to her mother-in-law, the mother-in-law might say something. And that alone can make her nervous, even if the mother-in-law doesn't do it. She does it every three Shabbases. So it's so important to open it up and let her know what you're feeling, because the open communication will lead to the mother-in-law not saying it, hopefully. And then when you get into a, a worse situation where the mother-in-law continues despite that and the daughter-in-law is going really, really, she's ruminating about it, her thoughts and she's having anxiety and she's stressed out and she's, I don't want to go there for Shabbos. I'm not going to go every month. I'm going to go every six weeks. Uh, I can't do it. I'm going to go every three months. I can't do this, she tells her husband. So we don't want it to get it to that point, get to that point. So it's so much better if she could openly communicate. And then if she sees her mother-in-law still doing it, she's going to she's gonna have to go back there and say, I notice that you're still doing this. I'm feeling very uncomfortable and I really don't want to come this Shabbos. I need to wait till you understand what I'm feeling. That's if she's in that place. Every single daughter-in-law and mother-in-law are in their own world and story and situation. So that's the one who's really suffering. Yes. And can take it. There are other personalities that will have different situations, but bottom line, the open communication is amazing. What right. if you have a daughter-in-law that isn't that's not a communicator? Yeah. So what's going to happen there? So she's going to feel those feelings, and she's that girl's probably going to back away altogether. Yes. And the mother-in-law won't know what's happening, and then they again they need to go, they need to go for counseling, right. and then there's many people that I work with that don't speak to their parents at all. And that's that's its own situation because there wasn't open communication or because. One of the mother-in-law or, or father-in-laws or daughter-in-laws or son-in-laws have an unhealthy, you know, emotional situation where they can't go beyond this. We're talking here about the healthy relationships and the healthy people. Right. Exactly. Oh, for sure. For sure. Because there's a difference. If you have a healthy relationship, if you can communicate, if you can talk, if the other person can listen, if you can listen, it's a whole different ball of wax than with the situation where the other person doesn't want to listen. The other person doesn't care what you have to say. So, and I actually do want to ask you this. But I really want to ask you about that. What if you're in that type of situation? Is there ever like a time when, you know, God forbid, there's a situation like 
where you just cut off all communication, no talking, no phone, no visiting, no nothing. Many, many situations like that. Yes. There are many, many situations where people cut off no talking for years and years and years. And I know many people. And it and it happens usually when the people were were not in a healthy place. It's not it's not a typical one. It's more of an, an unhealthy situation because usually when people are in a healthy place, they can communicate. Right. Okay. So there's so there you're saying there are some situations, not ideal, obviously not ideal, but there are some situations where it's best yes. like for, for the family, for the for the wife and for the husband, for that family to like kind of just cut off communication what, with the parent or yes. what if the mother in law yeah. is just not in a healthy place and she does she cannot respect it. Right. What the the, the daughter-in-law and the son are not in a, one of them are not in a healthy place. They can't respect it. Usually when all the people are healthy, you can go to counseling and discuss it through because most people are dying for family. They want family. They love family. They want a grandmother and grandfather to see their children. Right. Um, I, I have a funny story about a father-in-law. A father-in-law um, says, calls up his children. It's, it's a joke. Actually, it's a famous joke. Um, it's not my personal, it's a famous joke in the world. Um, the father calls up his children. He says, mom and dad, we're getting a divorce. Uh, we're, me, me and mom are getting a divorce. Uh, we're not, our relationship isn't going so well. We're miserable. We're so, we're, we're going out of our minds. We don't know what to do. We, we're not getting along. And the son says, don't worry, don't worry. You know, I, I'm going to get everyone to come for Pesach. We're going to come for Pesach. Get all the kids will all come for Pesach. Oh, thank you. Are you sure? Are you sure we could all come? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You'll help us out. They hang up and he screams out to his wife, Malka, what sweetheart? The children, I arranged them to come for Pesach. So she goes, really wonderful. And then he says, now what can I arrange for next year? <laughs> so there's a situation, oh a funny situation about a, you know, a family who they're dying for their children to come, but they can't get them to come for Pesach. Right. Because like I say, the mother, uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law want usually the children more than the children want the relationship. True. And so they always, so that they have to be the ones that are mevater. That's also part of the reason because, you know, they raise those children and the, they're the newlyweds and the indiv they're going through individuation where they want to do their own thing and they don't want the relationship as much. So that's what the joke is based on. <laughs> right. No, exactly. Because yeah, the newly married couple, they're, they, they're, they're married. Maybe they have like a baby or, or a toddler or, or something. They they want right. to start their own lives the way that they want to do it. And it may yes. be different than the parents want them to do. Yes, you know? exactly. So, yes. Yes. Um. So I, you know, I, I love personal stories about the topics that we talk about in the podcast. And I just want to ask you if you could please share a story or two about one of either one of your clients or somebody that you know, who's somebody who had initially had a conflict with either her mother-in-law or her daughter-in-law and was able to resolve the conflict successfully, creating an atmosphere of shalom bias, peace, you know, in their home. Yes. So um, there was a mother-in-law. Can I start off with a joke first? Please. The, mo <laughs> the mother-in-law. Um, came into the room and there was apple juice all over the couch. And um, she she says, she sees her daughter and she goes, I can't believe it. You spilled apple juice with a bottle all over the couch. I can't believe it. She goes, mommy, I didn't do it. And somebody else in the room says, it was um, it was your daughter-in-law. So, so the daughter-in-law walks in, she says, apple juice, did, did, did I spill apple juice with a bottle on the couch? So the mother-in-law says, Couch, on. Who would ever, ever not spill a uh, make their couch available for everyone to pour apple juice on? That's absolute pleasure. Please spill apple juice all over my couch anytime you want. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a, a mother and daughter in law's story. I love anyway, it. <laughs> so um, what happened was um, the mother in law and father in law kept on inviting the couple for Shabbos, for Hanukkah, for Pesach, all the different times. The daughter-in-law and, and, and son-in-law son were not coming. They kept on a different excuse every time. And the mother called up her son, what's going on? Why won't you come for Shabbos? And the father-in-law tried with the son. And they, they tried with the daughter-in-law. They kept on not wanting to come. And when they would come even to us for Shabbos, they stayed up in their room. Oh, interesting. So they, they don't 
they don't love us. They we're, we're unlovable, I guess. We don't they don't want to be with us. And at every party, they looked like like you no know, holding their and with son and daughter line, they wouldn't say the problem. It went on for months and they went to Rabbanim and they went to counselors. And everyone said, you know, you need to you need to finally get them to open up what it is. Gr with great difficulty, after a long time, they found out that the mir the marriage wasn't going well, and both didn't want to open up. And meanwhile, the mother and daughter and and the mother-in-law and father-in-law were in such pain for years, not knowing why they didn't connect. And meanwhile, they were both having their own issues, right, and with each other. And the parents took it personal, right? But totally personal. They yes. thought they were. They tried everything. They tried giving money. They tried, and you keep on seeing this situation, where if you would just would have known all those years of sleepless nights, and and advice and coaching and going to psychologists and speaking to friends, this couple wasn't getting along and they didn't want to share that they won't get along and that's their right. right but look at the pain it caused the parents and when opening it up eventually to come to speak and speak to psychologists we were able to discuss it figure out the, what the issues were and then go back to the parents and then when it all resolved it's a big happy family now but what occurred was unbelievable pain that could have possibly been prevented by a psychologist that would have gotten involved in sooner than sooner than later because it was many years and a lot of I see the relationships between mother and daughter-in-laws and families and estranged children are because people aren't opening up and saying what the what the problem is even for the mother and father-in-law what they could have done here they would have given space they would have said you know what there's right now, they are emotionally going through troubles and pain and strife. And as a mother and a father, we want not, we don't have responsibility anymore per se, but we have to be supportive in the way they want it and how they want it and upon their request. And that's what the parents would have done. They would have done anything for these children, right. but instead it festered. There was pain here, pain there, no speaking to each other moving far away from each other. And we are supposed to learn from these stories. And um, I would love to be able to help people in my life to, to bring people together in those situations. My mother was a marriage counselor and she wow. brought so many people together in her life. And I would love to help conflict between people and help them be mavater, open communication, respect and dignity everything could be done with the tone of a voice just be respectful to each other and think about the dance and the close talking just to back up give some space see where she's at the daughter-in-law remember we are the in the hierarchical relationship the mother-in-laws have the wisdom and the experience and they've done their own they were their own bride wouldn't they want to give their bride what we wanted as when we were brides if right. we have such intuition and we have such, we have love and we have wisdom and we have trailed paths. We've been, we've been there. We've done it. Now it's time for giving the daughter-in-law the space to, to do it and to let her have a happy life. So I love it. Yeah. my, my pitch is mother-in-laws, see if you can pull back and don't not tend to yourself, tend to your emotions through speaking to someone, but do the dance of stepping back and give yourself a chance for that beautiful jackpot, the prize of your grandchildren in the future, for couples to have a, a calm, peaceful life and to uh, reduce anxiety and to be able to flourish in their beautiful new marriage and you to have a strong core yourself and get yourself to be able to be happy within your own life. And that will pave the way for this beautiful relationship. And the Rusa Naomi, I mean, that what can be better than that? The product of the eventual Mashiach. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And it's so interesting because as you're speaking, I, I, you know, something is coming up for me. It's, you know, um, so much pain and heartache could be saved if we just don't take everything personally, you know? Yes. 
Yes. Not personally, because it usually isn't. When you meet someone in the street and they're giving you a look, then the most natural thing is, I guess they don't like me. Right. Or, you know what? I'm not their, I'm not their kind of person. But my mom taught me, no, they're going through something. Their mind is preoccupied. They're, they're suffering themselves because if they were in a place to smile, they would. It's not personal. 98% of the time when somebody's being mean to you or giving you a look, they're doing it to 90 other people, or right. all the other people in their, in their lives. And maybe they've just chosen a few that they can be comfortable with. Maybe they're insecure. Right. So to just not take things personal will put everyone in every situation in a better, in a better frame of mind. It's amazing. It's great advice. It really is great advice across the board. So thank you. Thank you so much, Javi, for joining us on America's Top Rabbitsons. And in the merit of this class, may Hashem watch over all the Jewish people and give enormous strength to the IDF soldiers, including Hillel, Bat Margaret, Hirsch Ben Perelhana, Hirsch Ben Rachel, and also Idan Ben Adali. Thank you so much again. Can I say one word? Please. I love my daughter-in-laws. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sharing. And thank that. you for inviting me. Thank you.